What's the number one question we're asked by our community? Is the cask whiskey market regulated? And the simple answer is no. As we've stated in previous Cask Market Insight videos, whiskey casks are considered an over-the-counter trade, and as such, prices depend on what buyers are willing to pay and values that sellers assign to their casks. There is no stock exchange where you can verify the worth of your cask or the liquid within. I hear you say, but Jake, surely HMRC have a lock on the cask trading market. Well, no. In fact, it was only at the end of 2023 that HMRC reached out to all Wauga holders to ask for our insights into how we felt the market should be regulated moving forward. And whilst this is a step in the right direction, it doesn't exactly fill me with confidence that the companies who have been directly involved in creating the bubble within the whiskey market are now being asked how it should be regulated. And the SWA? Well, the Scotch Whiskey Association wasn't set up with the cask market in mind. Their remit is safeguarding scotch as a category and working alongside distillers to protect producers and consumers. And you may think that if you don't own or invest in casks, that what happens in the cask market doesn't affect you. But if you're a whiskey enthusiast, you couldn't be more wrong. Whiskey casks have been released to the open market by their respective brands for over 100 years in order to facilitate large-scale blending and independent bottling. However, over recent years, cask investments have been normalized, and unfortunately, most companies that provide this service are not bottling businesses at all. In fact, they often recommend exit strategies that involve other investors buying out your position or you submitting your cask to auction in the hopes of achieving wild returns. We have seen a huge surge in cask prices within the secondary market over the past five years as a result of this. And whilst prices definitely topped out in 2023, we will likely see the disappearance of indies and new brands within the industry unless we put a stop to these practices. As a young independent bottler, I find this incredibly disappointing, particularly as it is only these so-called investment companies that are benefiting in the long run, whilst brands and individual investors will pay the ultimate price. Here at the Whiskey Baron, we have been both aware and publicly passionate about these issues for a long time. And whilst we do provide cask ownership opportunities to select clientele that are willing to work alongside our bottling business, we are ultimately against cask investments being sold and want the market at large to be both educated and aware of the issues that are happening. We've released three videos to date with the sole intent of education and have had a fantastic response from the whiskey community. We have also reached out to both HMRC and the SWA on several occasions in an effort to shine a light on the different issues that are occurring, hoping that something would be done. But Jake, what about the Cask Whiskey Association? Sorry, the who? I hadn't heard of this governing body, and I was initially delighted to hear about the CWA, as it was formed in a supposed attempt to create a safe environment for whiskey enthusiasts and customers to buy and sell casks. I quote from their website, By setting best practices in cask whiskey ownership and sales, the association aims to protect cask whiskey customers and the wider whiskey industry. So, what does this mean for you? Why is it happening? And who are the CWA? Well, Herein lies the issue. To say that this association is self-serving is an understatement. Whiskey Magazine reported that founding members include three cask trading companies, one independent trader, and three independent bottlers. However, a small amount of digging will show you that these independent bottlers are also cask traders, and the majority of their business constitutes cask trading, brokering, or sales. You will also see that the majority of these businesses have been formed within the past five years. And when did the bubble within the cask market start? Oh, about five years ago. So hold on. This is essentially a group formed by seven cask traders, almost all of whom are new on the scene, that sell casks to private individuals, and their aim is to regulate the market of private cask sales. Interesting. Dig a little deeper, and you will find that the majority of these businesses are London-based brokers. So Lord knows why the CWA is based in Edinburgh. To add an air of legitimacy, perhaps? I'm sure that like me, your eyebrows are raised and you're wondering if this audacious act can be serious. In case you aren't aware, the backlash within the whiskey industry has been mighty, with many social posts calling out the association and raising concerns about its members and how it was formed. Forbes printed the following statement. Much like a student does not grade their own paper, 
a criminal does not choose their own verdict, and an official does not elect themselves, cask brokering companies should not, in any scenario, be self-proclaiming themselves as protectors and advisors of the entire cask whiskey industry and positioning themselves above all the other companies who are operating fairly and with integrity. These companies are giving themselves a title and badge of legitimacy above others, and this should not be allowed. I couldn't agree more. What exacerbates the situation even more, though, is their vague and ultimately non-existent solution. A four-pronged attack that firstly allows them to select who is part of their club, despite not having been elected themselves. Secondly, bolsters itself as the resource for private individuals to trust, despite all founders having clear financial motivation. Thirdly, plans to provide unsolicited advice to businesses whom they deem to be in breach of their made-up rules. And finally, plans on parading around and rubbing shoulders with politicians to show that they really care about an issue that they themselves have helped to create. Articles by Whiskey Magazine and The Spirits Business refer to experts and authors being part of the newly formed association. What they fail to mention, however, is that both of these experts and authors have also been employed by different cask investment companies over the years, and so they too are in prime position to benefit financially from their newly formed association. But do you want to know what really puts the nail in the coffin? If you look on Companies House, there are only two people linked to the CWA both of whom are also directors of Cask Trade Limited. Why is this relevant? Well, Cask Trade was in the news in November of 2023, as it came to light that their head of finance had previously been jailed for six years and nine months for his role in a £78 million investment fraud. Alongside accomplices, Spencer Mitchell Steinberg claimed to have a contract to supply goods to the 2012 London Olympic Village, along with contracts with major hotel chains. But it was all a sham to lure investors into parting with their money. This individual has now dropped his last name and is known simply as Spencer Mitchell. And Cash Trade released the following statement saying that he was a valued member of staff. The demonstrable reality is that he does not have responsibility for or control of the company's banking accounts or customer funds. My question is, why is he hiding his last name? If you can't even be honest about who you are, why should we have any faith in what you do? And more importantly, how can directors of a company that have hired a convicted fraudster claim to set best practices in cask whiskey ownership and sales? In summation, I find this audacious display of self-righteousness to perfectly epitomize my experience with untrustworthy businesses in the industry so far. The fact that the CWA refers to cask ownership as an investment is in and of itself entirely misleading. But the idea that they are the ones who should set regulatory boundaries is nothing short of outrageous. Had the CWA provided any tangible level of protection to distillers or consumers, it would be one thing. Equally, if they had raised the issue publicly and welcomed any and all independent businesses to join the conversation, it would be clear that they mean well. But in my opinion, the cloak and dagger formation of this unelected body speaks volumes as to their intentions. I have dealt with certain individuals and companies that are part of the CWA in varying degrees over the years, managing two of the directors listed as private clients once upon a time. Whilst I have conducted business with certain members in the past, I will be cutting all ties with any members of the CWA moving forward. Like the original Whiskey Barons, I see my position in the industry as an independent bottler to be an honour and a privilege. We are nothing more than humble guardians of Scotland's golden nectar, trusted by producers to bolster the industry and welcome consumers into the category both professionally and responsibly. Whether it be in bottle or cask form, the first thought of any independent bottler should be to honour the legacy that has been handed down to them, protecting the brands and doing right by consumers. Anything else is self-serving. As always, I urge all members of the public to seriously consider information that they are being given when it comes to these cask investments. Please, speak with multiple sources before making any decisions. Thank you.